Hey everyone, welcome back and welcome to challenge five. In this challenge, we're gonna do something a little bit differently. Rather than jumping right into our story, we're gonna start with a pre-challenge concept introduction. And so we're gonna work with loops in this challenge for the very first time. And uh, these are so important that I wanted to kind of uh, play with them in a flow before we actually go into our story and build out um, the solution for a challenge that Pedro actually will have uh, later on here in challenge five. So we're gonna start off by talking a little bit about loops. And we're gonna build a screen flow that helps uh, understand the loop uh, concept and kind of how it works. And there's really two kind of key terms that you need to be familiar with when we're working with loops. Uh, one is a collection. And so inside a Salesforce flow, you can define a collection and you've probably seen that um, you know, in multiple places, kind of when we're creating variables or doing things with get elements, we have the ability to make a collection. And what a collection is, is just a group of similar items. And so that's kind of vague sounding, but you could imagine that you could have a collection of accounts, or if you made um, four or five different uh, number variables, you could have a collection of number variables. And I like to visualize the collection as like just a cardboard box or even better, a filing cabinet filled with like a drawer and you open up the drawer of the filing cabinet and uh, in that drawer is a collection of items and that's your collection. So you could, uh, to kind of stretch this analogy, you could imagine that it's uh, a drawer filled with Salesforce account records or it's a drawer filled with pieces of paper and each piece of paper has like a, a word written on it. So that would be a text collection or each piece of paper had a number on it. That'd be a number collection. Most of the time when you're working with loops, you're gonna be dealing with Salesforce records. So by and large, that's what you should kind of imagine is that you open up a filing cabinet in a drawer is just a group of records and they're in a, a collection. And that brings us to the loop element. And the loop basically allows you to iterate over a group of items. And those items are always in a collection, but you could imagine that if you open up the filing cabinet and you pull out an account record, that's like a one file of the collection, you could then change the name or you could uh, count it and say, okay, this is the first one. And then you go on the next one and this is the second one. And that's actually what we're gonna build in our flow right now. And so I'm actually just gonna uh, press the escape key here and we're gonna jump over to Salesforce. And I want to uh, build a screen flow that illustrates those two concepts of both a collection and a loop. So I'm gonna navigate over here and click on the little gear icon and press setup and we will type in flow, then we'll click on flows. And I'm gonna press new flow. We're just gonna open up this flow. We're not gonna use this flow really anywhere else in the course, so um, I guess you can name it or not save it. Um, do kind of treat this a little bit uh, less importantly than some of the other flows. But uh, we're gonna pick the screen flow type and I will press create. And then uh, as I like to do, I will go to the freeform layout just so we can get a look at uh, all the elements over here on the left. And so the one element that the logical element we're going to work with is this loop element. And as you can see, when we hover over, it says iterate over a collection of values or records. And so before we can even get to the loop element, we have to create that collection somehow. And the best way to do that when you're working with Salesforce records is to use a get element. So I'm gonna drag a get element to the canvas, and just drop it there. And I'm gonna call this get accounts. And what I wanna do with this get record element is just get every account in Salesforce. And because we're in a trailhead environment, there's only 15, so it's not that many. So it's not a huge deal. Um, you don't always have to go and get every account. You know, your collections can be very specific. You could say, I just wanna see the accounts that are from California, or I just wanna see the opportunities that are closed lost. And um, you can do that as we have throughout the course by using these condition requirements here. In this case, just because I want every single account, I'm gonna change this and just say no conditions, get every account in Salesforce. I'm not gonna sort them. And then uh, the key difference, the thing that makes this um, get element give us a collection rather than a record single variable is by choosing how many records to store and selecting all records, which I'm gonna click. And that's it, that's all we have to do. So I'm gonna press done. And because we selected get all records, when this get element runs, it's just, it's just gonna find every account in Salesforce and return them in a collection for us. So the next step is to connect the screen flow to our get uh, accounts. 
And now we're ready to drag a loop to the canvas. And so I'll do that now. I'll just drag a loop over to the canvas and drop it there. And I'm going to say iterate, or maybe I'll change this. Um, I'll just call it loop through accounts because that's what it's doing. And so you can see that uh, the description here is like this starts a loop path for iterating over items in a collection variable. For each iteration, the flow temporarily stores the item in the loop variable. And I'll show you that in a second. So the only two things that we have to specify when we drag a loop element to the canvas is, well, I guess there's three. First, you have to name it. So I'm just going to call it loop through accounts. And then you have to pick your collection variable. And so I'm going to select this uh, drop down, and we only have one. And we have a record collection variable here. And that is from our get element. So I'll pick that. And then this is more advanced, just specifying the direction for iterating over the collection. You can either start at the very beginning or at the very end and work either forward or backwards. And in many scenarios, it doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't matter here, but sometimes it will. So just keep it, keep that in mind um, that you do have the ability to specify that. I would say 90% of the time when I'm actually building flows in the real world, um, I just leave it the default. So maybe more, maybe even 95%. So I'll press done, and then I'm going to connect the get account element to the loop, and then I'm going to save my flow. And I'll just call this screen dash loop primer, because we are uh, priming you as the student to understand loops. And uh, the, the point of doing this is that so when we actually get to the challenge, you'll already have one exposure to loops, and you'll kind of understand how they work a little bit better. So we're going to pause the video there, and in the next video, we will jump into uh, continuing to build out our loop. Uh, so far, what we've done is we've just you know configured a screen flow. We've uh, configured a get element to go and get every account in Salesforce, and that's a collection. And then we dragged a loop element to the canvas. And what we'll do next is iterate over every item in the loop.